Uh, right, we should talk about Mayo and the county board meeting. So somehow it came into our possession. The, uh, the Owen, we sent Owen to go and do some journalism, do some digging, and he's on holidays now, so it definitely wasn't him, or, any, definitely of the, wasn't him. <laughs> or any of the people that he met. But um, I just don't know if you saw the story recently. It's kind of boring, but not a little bit funny. Uh, BBC and um, Sky have both issued diktats to their staff. BBC will no longer understand because it sounds a little bit pompous, and mm. Sky will no longer have sources where they're just ripping stuff off another media company. They're going to learn some way of attributing somebody else broke this story okay. first, but it doesn't matter. So, uh, off the ball understands and off the ball sources have told us. <laughs> uh, we, got the, we got the minutes to the county board meeting. We didn't nick it off anybody else. Is no, we definitely did not, no. We did. Uh, some get, people may have nicked it off us, but we didn't nick it off anybody else. We did else. get the minutes of the county board meeting. This but, was the secret county board meeting that we had sent Owen Sheehan to on Thursday night. They made for very interesting reading. They did, and how much goes into a county board minutes? Is it every word that is? It turned out quite a lot over the I course was like, of the I'm evening. I'm sure they'll just kind of dress this up a little bit. No, Eugene Rooney's email was a particular highlight for me. So, uh, you, an email from Eugene Rooney and an email from Tim O'Leary, who are two of those involved in the Mayo Foundation. You just uh, need to explain names here as, as we go along, because look, most of us at the start were like, "Ah, look, this is going to blow over. No need for us to get too intimately acquainted." with the various characters, but it turns out this is a long-running saga, a proper soap opera, that it is also going to run for months and months. So buckle up, folks, get involved, pick sides, <laughs> cheer on whoever you want. Oh, you're enjoying this too much now. <laughs> cheer on whoever you want. Excuse and, me. Like, it's, it's ultimately... Me. This is not a joke. It's a victimless this is crime. The betterment. This is the betterment. I know as a Kildare man you're worried that if Mayo get it together, think of the dominance we may have. Look, you just need, you just need a good supporters club who can funnel money wherever they want. It's all off the books and no one knows and no one cares about it. Too much of this... Enough about Kildare. ...following protocol. So, Tim O'Leary, people will be aware of at this stage, Explain. is an English businessman of Mayo heritage who, having been to an All-Ireland final a couple of years ago, thought, how come these dubs are so good and what can we do about it? got in touch with the Mayo County Board and said, listen, I would like to become financially involved in backing this Mayo team. I've looked at what Dublin do. It seems as though they have a huge advantage financially. How can I help? From that, there were some personal donations, but also he set up this Mayo Foundation, which is based in America, and they sort of take advantage of the laws in America whereby you can get a good tax rebate because it's a charitable trust. Right. So, got a huge amount of donors. Obviously, there's a big Mayo diaspora that's now, out there. there's no one from the Mayo County Board on that organisation. Is that correct? No, but the Mayo County Board were very aware of the setting up of the Mayo Foundation. Sean, and Sean Warren's got an interesting piece today where apparently um, if you have an organisation raising money for a county board, mm. there is supposed to be a member of the county board on the board of that organisation. So, the Mayo GA International Supporters Foundation apparently don't fulfil this criteria. But, I mean... Listen, I think that... And will be one of many sideshows. Don't ask, and don't tell. Kevin Max Day was talking about, I think, that sort of situation in this of if you have somebody who's coming willing to help, and it seems as though Tim O'Leary has pulled together an awful lot of smart people and rich people who are willing to help, that as a county board, you make a way, you have a way of making it work. That if you explain to them from the outside, say, listen, we want your help in whatever way possible, but somebody from the county board is going to need to sit on that board. Has that conversation happened? There's been nothing to suggest from Mayo that in all this correspondence that's out there that they've been pushing the foundation saying we need somebody on that and the foundation have been kicking back. Like, that hasn't happened. So there was this dinner in New York where the Mayo County Board were very much there in force where Mike Kennelly stood up and spoke about how Tim O'Leary was a great man and a great supporter. Mayo's of Mayo's greatest supporter? Or a great Mayo's supporter? Greatest supporter. No? Yeah. Is that it? I mean, that, I thought that was for you or, or Kev. Kev was obviously very upset that it wasn't. Well... We'd like to be Mayo's greatest supporter, Jared, but unfortunately, our pockets are not deep enough. One of the greatest Mayo supporters, like, is the exact line. So, some people are giving hundreds of thousands of euro, we're trying to get free tickets. You know? <laughs> it's a different level of support. Let's be quite honest there. It's a different level of support. Right, so let's go through some of the... So, that's Tim O'Leary and uh, Eugene Rooney. Who's he? So, Eugene Rooney is a businessman who I think is based out of New York, who's been a long-term supporter of... Mayo GEA, who's also one of the donors, it seems, to the foundation. Former goalkeeper? Yes, a uh, former uh, Mayo player as well, but very long connection with Mayo, I think would be very well known in Mayo, who hosted the team, it must have been the previous time they were in New York, there was a bill racked up at one of his pubs. 20 grand. 20 grand, which I think in the grand scheme of things in a New the York old pub. The old Castle Bar. 
in Eugene Rooney's not, life probably not the isn't a. All time, but I recommend that one too. I don't think it's. I don't think the money is necessarily the issue. It's the very fact that they didn't pay the bill. Wasn't paid. Yeah. Um, so there's been. We'll get to his. We'll get to his email because we've got some images to go through here. So this is from the uh, the leaked minutes sourced by off the ball. Just one thing to point out here. Minutes of Kushta Kunde Moyo meeting, 7th of November 2019-2019. The uh, 7th of November would be yesterday week, mm. which would be... Or no, it would be tomorrow, is it? The 7th of November was last Thursday, not yeah. last Wednesday. And when was it? I know this because my birthday is the 5th, and I straight away I went, wait a second, my birthday was Tuesday, and the 7th was be Thursday. So, so look, it's a, it, it's a uh, simple mistake. Right. But uh, a mistake nonetheless in the very first line. Number two, minutes of the previous meeting. The minutes of the previous meeting were to be amended with the inclusion of the following. The chairman does get annoyed with the press and that in the case of Ballantover having won five county titles, the best team of the decade, he would have felt their picture should have been on the front page, but instead of the front page was another twist in the Mayo saga. There were no other matters arising. The minutes were proposed by McHugh and seconded by Moynihan. So it's like um, previous minutes. Just need to amend that to... The chairman was annoyed. Annoyed at the local media for putting the wrong picture on the front page. Right? This is important, important stuff. Uh, item number three, Castlebar Delegate wants clarification on media ban. Castlebar Mitchell forwarded the following email. Dermot Akara, can you please qualify whether or not a vote took place on confidence in the Mayo GA executive and board at last night's county board meeting? If no such vote took place, as we understand to be the position, then can you reconcile this fact with the press statement issued last night that the vote was resoundingly passed by all delegates? I await your prompt reply. Regards. So basically they're saying there, hang on a second, you told everybody there was a vote last night. We were at the meeting. There was don't, no vote. Don't actually remember a vote there, lads. Mm. Uh, what the hell? Number four is my favourite. Eugene Rooney email. You, this is all included straight in. Uh, Eugene Rooney forwarded the following email. Laurel and Hardy show. I'm going to the meeting on Thursday night. Fool. Can you tell me? Our tape recorder is allowed. Started a new comedy group. Dermo, Polly, Kevy, Mikko, you clowns. Pato the manager. Resign, you fools. He shouts. It's a shambles. Regards, Eugene Rooney. I mean... I, I, fair play to Eugene for getting the right email address. Fair play to the Mayo County Board for just sticking it in there and reading it out. Well, I think part of the reason that the email was read out was that there was some other correspondence from one of the clubs saying, we need to know what emails are coming through from people around the foundation. That, right. Because another part of the problem is that there have been any amount of emails back and forth been leaked out. So the County Board and people involved in the delegates are obviously reading this online and going, well, why weren't we told about this email at the meeting. Yeah. So I think that is the reason that uh, Eugene is Rooney's there. email was read out at the county board meeting. Again, the county board assumed in private that this would not emerge. But obviously it has. And no. it shows the uh, depth of feeling, I suspect, that Eugene Rooney has towards the county board right now. Number five, treasurer wants to return the money. The Bonnie Conlon delegate asked, where do we now stand? <laughs> Where do we go from here? That's what's going on. How do we get here? And where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? The treasurer said that if it was up to him, he'd give the money back to O'Leary. Not capitalised. The Park KC delegate proposed that the only way forward was mediation, which was seconded by the Ardnery delegate and was agreed by the meeting after unanimous vote, which we hope did take place. The Bravey delegate says he does not condone the abuse suffered by officers, but that if clubs had known the full extent earlier, then matters would not have escalated to where they are now. Which is a good point, Mr. Bravey delegate. Fair play to you. PRO asked for agreement on the statement that would be released to the press. The meeting agreed on the wording of the press release. That concluded the business of the meeting. Remember, the press release was like, a meeting was held. Mm. We've no further, no further comment. You can read the full story on offthewall.com, what happened at Mayo GAA's behind closed door meeting. So we put that story up yesterday evening around about between five and eight. I don't know what time, five o'clock? Yeah, half five? five? Six? Half five, yeah. And then um, this came to our attention overnight. Uh, uh, minutes of Kushta Kunde meeting is a subject line from Mayo Secretary Akarja. Would the individual who forwarded the minutes of last Thursday's meeting to Off the Ball like to identify himself or herself, or will they continue to hide behind the smoke screen of social media? I am not surprised by the actions of the individual involved, and they call themselves Mayo supporters. Supporters like this are, like the individual who recorded the recent meeting, not welcome. I find it despicable that an individual will act in such a manner. It is fairly... I mean, it's not really that despicable, is it? But it seems as if he's got, like, a single individual in mind. Well, What it, if there's a group of individuals? No comment. He goes from one individual to many individuals yeah. uh, throughout this. And, the, like, the obvious irony of an email being sent out saying, please don't leak this to the media, and that email was sent at 10 o'clock last night, and by 7 o'clock the next morning, it's in the media. Yeah. So they're not going to win the media battle. 
And the reason they're not is because so many people want this to get out there. So well, many people want this sorted. They could, they could come out and explain what they're thinking and what they're trying to do and how they're trying to rescue the situation. Because at the minute, you still have an organisation that has a bunch of money that they raised on behalf of Mayo GA, mm. which should go to Mayo GA, which I think at some point will probably go to, to, GA, to Mayo GA. But what's the pathway to get the money from there to Mayo GA in a meaningful manner that everybody's going to be happy with how it's used? And what's the pathway to making sure that the next time money gets raised, that it's raised in a way that everybody understands exactly where it's going before it's raised? Especially the people who are buying the tables and, and donating the money. Well, the people who were buying the tables and donating the money, it seems, were buying the tables and donating the money on the understanding that there were very concrete plans in place within Mayo for the improvement of Mayo football. So a lot of talk about Loch Lana and this centre of excellence that they're looking to build and a feeling and a hope that that was further along the tracks than it actually is. So the vast majority of money raised at that dinner was to go towards that project. They're not happy with what they've been told about the Mayo County Board about where that project is right now. So they want more reassurances, they want more dialogue and basically to be told exactly what's happening before they hand over a quarter of a million dollars. I was talking to an awful lot of people about this yesterday back in Mayo because I'm always a bit wary that Mayo is a big diaspora and a lot of people outside of Mayo talk about Mayo and there's the people on the ground. And there's definitely a huge culture clash because... There's a, a little bit of sympathy talking to people for the county board officials that they are volunteers, that nobody wants to be a county board official, nobody wants to be a club delegate. The amount of people I spoke to at clubs yesterday and asked about their delegates and they were saying, I have been there for about 10 years, 20 years. I said, like, why? Said, oh, it's the worst job in the world. Oh, it's grand. Nobody wants to do it. But, like, but, the, but you have influence like, nah, you don't really. You just have to go to the meetings. If you ask a question, you might get an answer or you may not get an answer. So there's no rush. There's no younger generation waiting to come through. So those delegates have been there for years. Those at the head of the county board have all been involved, the majority of them, for quite a long time at this stage, but have done so in a voluntary role. And the culture clash is that on the other side now, they've come head to head with what seems to be a very professional organisation. People are used to dealing with professional people and with a lot of money. And how does one transfer to the other? And it is what you're saying of the Mayo County Board should have somebody on the foundation. But have the foundation been told that? If you're suddenly hoping to get, it's, what, probably adding up to about four or 500,000 between the personal donation from Tim O'Leary and the 250 grand, like, that's only the start of it, it seems. Like, there's many, many more millions to come down the track for Mayo if they were to play this right. It could absolutely transform Mayo for the next generation. Kevin, Kevin McStay touched on this in his article in the Mayo News this week, how they need a full-time CEO. Yeah. And every county needs a full-time CEO. Or, or counties could join together and mm. have a backroom staff that manages both counties because small counties probably don't need one, but some of the bigger counties def definitely do. And actually, maybe that's wrong. Maybe the small counties need them more than the big counties and the central funding could come from uh, the GAA. Certainly, there was a, there was a point in the minutes which, was, um, which we didn't bring up there and which was a very serious point about we need professional mediation in this and we need mm. the professionals to be dealing with this. So they were actually calling for outside help and it, it's been clear over the last week or so that the Connacht Council have summoned the Mayo County Board to a meeting with the uh, GA and you're going to see the GA CEO basically sit the lads down and say, I know where all the money goes because I, was, I used to be the financial controller of the mm. GA and I know exactly how much money is coming in and out of counties and I know how it's supposed to be run and at the minute this doesn't look like it's being run in a way that makes sense, or certainly you're not covering yourselves in any glory here. So um, now, Mayo do have a say a full-time commercial officer in place now, whose obviously job is to bring in even more revenue. But we are talking about a county that spends well over a million euro every year on the senior football team alone, and to have that in the hands of volunteers and the pressure that that brings on them. How do they how do they have the time to actually deal with this correctly? And uh, Max Day's article is interesting, so he talks about that, and he's mentioned it quite a lot says no matter what the situation is between a key sponsor and the board, the bottom line is it has to be resolved satisfactorily. We cannot be losing key people that have the ability to help us in various parts of the GEA. We don't have a centre of excellence. The academy is in its infancy and needs huge resources. The stadium debt is crippling. So the idea that would, there will be a falling out with people who are basically well-intentioned, if a little misguided, is absolutely ridiculous. He obviously has, as he says himself, a lot of personal experience uh, of the people within the Mayo County Board. 
what they continually do each year as I see it is they have no regard for the human fallouts of these episodes as well as that there appears to be nobody trying to focus on solutions here how do we get off the back pages how do we get Tim O'Leary on board and get things moving again and I think that's the key point there's been no and this has rumbled on for two months now it's really only come to a head over the past probably 10 days there's been little in any of this even from these county board meetings of actually we really want this money yeah we really want this foundation to come and help me do we need it yeah it's no i'd give the money back to them name calling like just cheap shots here there and everywhere yeah I, look in fairness i think there was a bit of that on both sides i i, mm. I you know kevin mcstay says however well intentioned or however misguided whatever it was like you know um i think that tim o'leary needs to come out and talk to people and explain exactly why he why he has taken this course of action and just how deep seated his connection with this is and how long standing this is gonna be. And, and like, was this just somebody coming over and going, look, I've got loads of money and I'm gonna and I'm gonna act like that? Or is it somebody who actually has a deeper relationship in on in the long term in mind? Because if that's the case, that hasn't come across. Mm. Like from the outside from the outside, like you would definitely say, uh, Mayo need to be careful who they end up dealing with because they're not entirely in control of this process anymore. You've got to have some control of the process and everybody has to understand it. And equally, if you're a big donor and you're coming in and you're giving money, then you want some guarantees about where that money's going to go and that needs to all to be above board. But I would say neither side has actually won the media battle. Uh, no, not right now. Certainly not. And again, there's no... Re like those processes you talk about, I, I, maybe they're never straightforward because this is quite a new thing. But you have to make every available opportunity count and if this comes forward from Mayo, have they sat in a room enough times with Tim O'Leary? Have they sat in the room enough times for this amount of money? Like, as I say, this could be transformative over the next 10 years for Mayo. You would have thought that this was almost, should have been top of their agenda at every single meeting. How do we make sure this works? If, and how do we make sure we're confident this will work? Have we sat in a room, all those questions that you have about the foundation, they should have the answers to all those by now. Yeah, who are, who are they, what, what, what are their aims, and then as soon as that's established and, and clarified, mm. I think that would actually help solve a lot of the issues. And then bring that clarification to everybody who's at these county board meetings, rather than in this sort of secrecy of, oh, there's stuff going on over here, but you don't need to know about it, and then everybody's going, well, who is this guy? Yeah, yeah, no, fair enough.